My name is Thais Gibson, and I'm the co-owner and creator of the Personal Development School. This is your daily breakthrough video, and in this video, I want to talk to you a little bit about fearful avoidant attachment style individuals and parental alienation. So this is something that's talked about very often. Um, sometimes it's also referred to as parental alienation syndrome, which has somewhat been debunked as an actual syndrome that people can experience. But the, the angle I really want to focus in here on this video is that parental alienation can be something where um, it, it really challenges and changes a child's ability to trust one or more caregivers because of the differing stories that are being told, because of the impact on a child's psyche, because of what can actually take place. And I want us to look at parental alienation as a specific set of programs that we learn to use in order to relate to other people because of the experiences we have that imprint us. So I'm going to do a deep dive into like what parental alienation actually is, um, what it's based off of and why it takes place, and then what you can do to reprogram this um, in case you find yourself in the situation. So before I dive in, we are still doing a sale to support our community, um, especially going into the fall in case there's a little more isolation again than usual. Um, the coupon code is with you, all one word, if you want 25% off of membership bundles. So for three months, six months, 12 months, um, we offer a full 30 day money back guarantee if you're not super happy with the content um, because we've had like tremendous results, people becoming secure all the time getting these amazing emails from people who are like, oh my goodness, I'm in a new relationship, I'm super secure, people getting married, people getting engaged, all kinds of stuff um, because they're showing up and really doing the work as well. I'm really, really impressed with and proud of our students in there because they are doing amazing. So um, I'll put a link in the description box below and in this video if you wanna jump in there. So let's talk about this. So what is parental alienation all about? Well, first and foremost, it's basically this concept or idea that talks about how a child can become alienated from one or both parents, usually because one of the other caregivers, the one that they're not being alienated from, um, is saying negative things, is bringing up negative um, stories, criticizing another parent, um, trying to scare a child about their parent, things like this. And this often happens um, most so when there's a divorce that's taking place in a family dynamic or household. So this can occur at like mild levels and then it can be, you know, moderate or severe. Mild examples of parental alienation might be something like, um, let's say a wife putting down the husband and saying negative things, but then being like, oh, you know what? I'm so sorry. I said that earlier about your father, honey. I was just having a bad day and actually correcting the behavior or addressing it. And what you want to remember is that when a child you know, is young, their parents are like their God, right? The parent is like the director of everything that happens, the caretaker, the savior, the, the protector, all these different roles. And so a lot of times, and I'm sure everybody can relate to this, a lot of times when an individual is growing up, whatever your parents say are, is what you tend to assume is the truth. And so it can be very confusing for a young child's mind when they start hearing, you know, your dad's not a good father or your mother's always lying all the time. You know, it can be very confusing for a child because it's, you know, they're, they're really taking in their caregiver's words and often, you know, have been conditioned to trust those words for a very long period of time. So I see this happen the most with fearful avoidant attachment style individuals. Um, and, and there's a major correlation between FA attachment style and parental alienation. And so what we'll see is that can be a mild version. Then we can have moderate. And moderate is really like the consistent put downs of another parent to the child in a way that over time starts to reprogram. Because remember, the subconscious mind is programmed through repetition plus emotion. So if a child is repeatedly hearing things that make them feel bad, these things are imprinting their subconscious mind over time. And if this is about the other parents, then obviously over time it's shifting their perceptual lens and view of that parent. And what I've often seen take place is that as soon as one caregiver um, is aware that the other caregiver is doing this or thinks that they might, it's not uncommon for the other caregiver to start doing the same. So we can have parental alienation um, experiences that happen either with one caregiver putting down the other caregiver, for example, dad putting down mom or mom putting down dad, or it can be both. They are both putting down each other, but specifically to the child. And what this does is it really creates this distorted view. And what I want you to imagine is, is that there's a child who's constantly hearing your dad lies, your mom lies, your, both parents cheat, both you know, all kinds of like 
painful things or, oh, they're not a good parent. They don't show up. They're never on time, whatever it is. And, and it can be like on a very strong continuum. I've heard things like, you know, saying that all kinds of things over the years, but, you know, in, in very extremes, like, oh, so-and-so has another family. So-and-so has a different sexual orientation. So, you know, all kinds of things. And, and what this does is it really confuses a child and it makes them experience really strong trust wounds because we think, okay, if we can't trust a caregiver, how are we ever going to trust other people out in the world? How is that possible? If our caregivers who are supposed to take care of us aren't trustworthy, then, you know, what happens from that point forward? So, so we have our, our mild and we have our moderate and then more severe parental alienation um, patterns would be things like um, a child being programmed enough by a caregiver that they actually start experiencing pushback against that caregiver themselves. So for example, um, I've seen this oftentimes, especially when there, when there's a divorce or a separation and, and a child is spending, um, allocating different amounts of time with each parent, you might see that, let's say the child is with the mother, you might see that if the child has been um, experiencing parental alienation in terms of the, the father programming the child against their own mother, maybe when that child is spending time with the mother, you might see that they are constantly on the phone or texting the father while they're with the mother. You might see that they're um, saying really negative things and, and treating the mother poorly, pushing her away, um, resisting spending time with her, all these different things. And it can be really interesting from like a, a legal perspective in terms of um, children and, and custody because it's really difficult for, for people to know, right? Is this because the parent's not a good parent or is this because there is some parental alienation going on? But that's not what we're here to focus on in this video. What I want to focus on is that if you were the fearful avoidant and if this is part of what created a fearful avoidant attachment style or trust wounds for you, what I want to share with you is what you can actually do about this, okay? So number one, you want to realize that the parent that did this, it is obviously a very dysfunctional thing and it's not a happy thing. And sometimes there can be an actual, you know, pretty strong absence of this caregiver being able to properly empathize with a child if this is in fact what they're doing. Because obviously that caregiver is seeing and interacting through that lens of like, I need to have the power and control over my child, not, hey, how are my actions going to impact the child and make my own child feel? And so there can be the absence of that, right? And there, and just along with that are going to come core wounds of feeling unseen, unheard, misunderstood, um, you know, unworthy of, of being cared for as you are, things like this. And I know that can be really painful to hear if you're recognizing this um, and maybe you've been through that experience. But this doesn't mean your caregiver doesn't love you or didn't care about you. It means they had their own dysfunctional patterns that they were interacting with the with the world through and their own fears that they were so seduced by that they acted from a, a, a place of dysfunction because it was better than them having the fear of maybe losing you as a child or not being as connected to you or things like this. So a lot of the root causes for a parent who does the alienating from the other parents um, a lot of the root causes have to do with this parent fearing loss of connection with the child, um, feeling uh, fearing a loss of power or control, um, and sometimes as well it can take place with a caregiver who feels repressed in their own power, and so sometimes they can sort of play the kids as pawns because it's like, well, if I have the child on my side, then I'm taking my power back. And I have some power here that you don't have as, as my ex or my spouse who I'm getting separated from or whatever it might be. So we're not justifying it. It's an extremely unhealthy thing for a caregiver to do. Um, but it can be really useful as the person who might be listening to this and, and sort of going through the processing of recognizing that this happened in, in your childhood to know that it wasn't because you weren't loved. It's because this person who was doing the alienating um, didn't have a better way of dealing with their own emotions and their own patterns and their own fears. And so this seemed like an okay strategy from a subconscious level. And often it's not like something that's premeditated. It's often not that the caregiver is sitting in their bed at night thinking like, how can I manipulate my child tomorrow? Usually it's that they are so stressed about something that they're just acting out of like, how do I get my needs met? And we know, and I've talked a lot about this in previous videos, that whenever there is a manipulative tactic that a person uses, it's usually also a symptom of somebody believing 
that they can't get their needs met, not knowing how to get their needs met. And because the brain is a needs meeting machine, if it can't find a direct way to go to the needs in a healthy form, it will find these indirect covert ways that often show up as manipulative tactics as a subconscious strategy to get needs met. Okay. So, so let's say that this is you. Okay. So number one, you want to sort of depersonalize it. Recognize this is probably about the parent's dysfunction, not about you not being worthy of love. It's, it's an absolute injustice to go through that as a child who didn't ask for that programming and then to make it mean something bad about you, like you're not worthy of love or you're an unloved person or something like that. So you really wanna like isolate and notice any meaning that might be there and you really want to question the validity of that story. Because our job, if we have painful programs implanted from other people, our job and our duty to the relationship to ourselves is to be able to go in, isolate those programs, pluck them out like the weeds that they are, so that we don't continue to give them power or existence when those are not things we would have chosen for ourselves in the first place. So that's number one. Number two, it can actually help to depersonalize further if you ask yourself, and it doesn't mean that we don't set boundaries, we're gonna get to that, but if you ask yourself, what do I think my caregiver was going through or both caregivers were going through, if it was both, at the time that caused them to do this? What was the sponsoring intention behind their actions? Were they just trying to keep a safe relationship with me? Were they afraid of being disconnected from me? Were they afraid of seeing me less? Um, you know, and, and try to like look at it from that perspective because if we look at the sponsoring intention, it also helps for us to not personalize things so much. Number three, you want to ask yourself, is this still happening? And if so, are there any boundaries that I might need to set for myself to keep myself in a healthy position? And if so, what would that look like? It could be speaking up. It could be saying, I will no longer listen to you. So say something negative about mother or father, whatever it is, you have to actually set and enforce those boundaries and you have to see those needs through. Okay. It's not uncommon that this is happening for people in their 50s and their, their parents are still doing this, um, saying negative things about the other. And while it might seem silly that it's even a problem in your full adult life, what the reason it is problematic is because it will trigger all of those other previously stored painful experiences that you had because your subconscious mind stores all memories with all the emotion intact. So it might seem silly to have to even set a boundary at 50 years old, but if you didn't process all that emotion of all those pain points that happened in your childhood years, teens, 20s, 30s, 40s, and there's this buildup of emotional residue around this, then when somebody says something now, it's gonna still hurt the same way it did all those times because you haven't processed that emotion out. So I just think that's really important to acknowledge. And that's your why for setting boundaries and why it still matters. Um, and the same thing applies if you're listening to this and you're like, yeah, this is still happening in my 30s or whatever it is, your, your, your 20s, whatever it might be. So that's really important. Now, the next thing you want to do is you want to ask yourself, what did I make this mean? You know, when I, when I heard these things, did I make it mean that like, wow, people can't be trusted as a whole? Did I make it mean that I'm unloved, I'm unworthy? Even if I'm not still making it mean that, what did I make it mean? And then you really wanna do some belief reprogramming around those stories because it's honestly an injustice, like I was saying before, to keep those things as the story of who you are because of experiences you went through that you didn't ask for and were not your fault. So if this is you, what I want you to do is pick those pieces of meaning that you find and write out the, the top three that are really painful to you and every day for 21 days, I want you to tell yourself a new story. So for example, if you made it mean that you're not worthy of love, for 21 days, you're gonna look for pieces of evidence in the morning and in the evening because those are the times that you are most suggestible, aka your subconscious mind is most easily imprinted by your own conscious mind and conscious thinking. And you're gonna consciously and intentionally create thoughts that say, I am worthy because, and you really wanna have pieces of evidence because the brain responds to evidence and it gets reprogrammed by evidence. So once you do that on a daily basis, show up for yourself in this area, support yourself in your boundaries, just the act of you setting boundaries now and speaking up against what's not appropriate for you to hear is extremely powerful in and of itself. That's its own form of reprogramming because you're showing yourself in relationship to self that I am worthy through the actions and through the way that I support myself in this process of healing. And then you really wanna hone in there on changing your stories as well and the beliefs, and the beliefs you've developed because of these experiences. 
Um, so I hope this all makes sense. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I'm happy to share more about this topic and, and dive further into it if this is something you guys are interested in um, or if you have any other videos you want to see around this or that are related to this, please let me know as well. I think it's such an important topic to cover and it's a huge topic for FA specifically. Um, so that's it for today. Please like, share, and subscribe if you're getting a lot of value out of these videos and I will see you in the next one.